Hey, Steve here. Well, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am going to show you how I design a 3D printed multi-cavity mold for making soft plastic baits. Uh, I'm just going to keep this uh, pretty simple today. We're going to do a basic grub, but this video might be a little long because I am going through the whole design process, uh, printer settings, uh, printing the mold, shooting the mold, all that fun stuff. So if any of you find any part of this boring, just use those little uh, skip buttons down there in the first pinned comment. But other than that, let's get this thing rolling and jump into the CAD. All right, here we are in Fusion 360. Uh, just keep in mind, I am not very proficient in Fusion. I'm used to SolidWorks, so the functions are a little different, uh, especially the constraints. They're a little weird in Fusion to me, so I, I still have to get used to that. But uh, to start this grub, I'm gonna be working off a sketch I drew and uh, took a picture of. So I'm gonna insert a canvas from my computer. Just gonna grab that image, and I'm gonna do that on the front plane. And I can scale this up a little bit. Hit OK, and then if we actually come over here to the grub and right click and do calibrate. I actually, I always draw a known dimension when I'm drawing out my baits. And this calibrate feature, you just use these two little dots here on my sketch I drew. And I can insert 2.5 inches. And that's going to scale the picture in Fusion. So when I'm done, it's going to be exactly the same size as the sketch I drew. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on my origin, come up here and do... Uh, edit canvas and I'm just gonna move this canvas I'm gonna line up the front with that plane and then line up the middle with this plane Hit okay and next thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna start a sketch on the front plane I'm gonna use the line tool and I'm just gonna come up say 0.1 tenth of an inch next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a spline and I'm going to start about halfway up that sketch because this is just going to be a reference line for me. So I'm just following the contour of my uh, drawing here. And once I get to the back, I just click this little check mark, which is create and continue. And that gives me my basic uh, contour I'm going to follow. And then I'm going to start making the little ribs and I'm going to use uh, the circle command for that. My ribs are going to be a little bit large. I'm going to use a tenth of an inch again for the circle. Uh, once I get the first one done, I'm going to use Tangent and just lock it into that front one. Then we can go back, start another one. Every time I do these circles, I want to make sure I have this little X. That's just going to lock it to the spline. So I'm going to make a bunch of 10 circles. Uh, again, this is where I can just right click and do repeat. Make a whole bunch of them. And once I get a couple, I'm just going to hit OK, and then I'm just going to move these over. I'm just going to overlap these a little bit. You can use the tangent command to actually lock them in perfectly, but uh, every time I do this and try to do a, add f uh, fillets later, Fusion goes a little crazy, so I'm just going to make sure I overlap them. Uh, we're just going to add a couple more. I'll probably fast forward through this. And then just to be different, uh, once I get to the middle of the grub, I'm going to use an ellipse. This is going to make like a little uh, fat section, kind of like how a rubber worm has. So I'm going to come up, say, 0.2, then say 0.20. Looks about good. Just move that where I need it to be. And then we're going to go back to circles. And then as I'm going down the back, I'm just going to start making these smaller. Just to be a little different. Do a couple of nines. Do a couple of eights. Just gradually get smaller as I get to the back. Zoom in here a little bit so you can see better. Come on. A couple of sevens. Maybe a couple of sixes, finish it off. Then just to round off the tail, I'm going to use a spline here. And I'm also going to make sure I constrain this one to the origin. Just going to OK out of that. And then I can actually come back here and grab my spline 
and just move these up to where I want it just to match my uh, original uh, sketch there. Just got to make sure I'm grabbing the spline ones and not the circles. Should be this one. Should be one more over here. And that looks pretty good. Just going to clean up my spline back here a bit. And last thing to finish this sketch off, just going to use a, a line from here to there. And I can finish that sketch. Once I got that finished, I'm just going to use the box, select everything, and I'm going to do a revolve. And I want to make sure I grab the right axis. And there you go. Let me turn this uh, canvas off. And that's my uh, finished scrub body for now. I'm going to come in and add some uh, fillets to this. Just holding in the control key as I do this to select them all. And let's say 0.02. It's not bad. You can come up here and you can change them. You say if you want it smoother, you do 0.05. Or if you want, a, want it ribbed for her pleasure, you do 0.01. And I think that's what I'm going to go with. That looks pretty good. Turn the canvas back on, and we're going to start the tail. So again, just going to start a sketch on the front plane. I don't like how Fusion always moves it on me. That's one of the other things I'm not used to. Again, just going to use a spline. I'm going to come in here and just start following my sketch I drew. Just going to rough it in at first. Because clearly my sketch is just uh, pretty quickly done. Always do that, hit the wrong key on the keyboard. Another thing I'm not used to. Let me find my grub again. Oh. And to finish this last one off, just want to constrain it to that first one. Finish the spline, then just close that off with a line. And I'm just going to come back in and, uh, okay, out of that, just adjust my spline a little bit. Make sure it's how I want it round this off a little bit maybe close the tip Gotta make sure you grab the points all right that's pretty good so I'm just gonna finish that sketch and then go up to extrude select that and I'm gonna make sure it's symmetrical and I'm gonna use a whole length and we're gonna go with 0.08 seems like a good dimension make sure this is on join and there we go, there's my tail. Pretty much done with the canvas, so I can turn that off. And I'm just going to add some uh, fillets to the edges here. Maybe 0.03. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to come down here to this edge, add some more fillets. I'm going to go uh, pretty big on this. Try 0.35. That should be pretty good. Just the... Uh, Smooths everything out. But uh, there we go. That's my finished grub. Uh, you can make it as uh, basic as you want, or you can get pretty crazy with, uh, like I said, just different sections, or you can use the same uh, rib all the way down. But that's what I'm going to go with. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to start uh, creating the multi-cavity part of this mold. So let's do that next. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I gotta figure out how many uh, grubs I can fit into a mold box that will fit on my printer bed. So I'm gonna create a sketch on the front plane and just using a rectangle. My printer bed is uh, eight by 10, but I'm gonna make this box a six by seven. I don't want it too big. And then we're just gonna center this up. 3.5. Bring it up a bit, say 2.25. That looks pretty good. So finish sketch. And once I get that done, I'm going to come up to the body number one, and I'm going to do move copy. And I'm just going to drag this and slide it back, say, I'll go back half inch. That's just key it in. That's just going to leave room for my sprue and my runners and all that. And after that's done, I'm going to go back up to the body, do move copy again, but I'm going to select create copy over here and just slide it down. 
we'll go down say 170 looks pretty good and we're gonna do the same thing move copy create copy and move it up say 170 the same dimension now if you really wanted to get crazy and put a whole bunch of these on your uh, mold box you could actually move them around you could have them staggered you would have to have a wider mold box but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a, a mold box of six for now just keep it simple and once I get those three where I want them I'm gonna come back up select all three of those and do the same thing move copy I'm gonna create a copy and I'm gonna slide these over just gonna eyeball it for now next I'm gonna turn that sketch off I'm gonna go to the top view and I'm just gonna drag and select all these and then I'm gonna come up here and do move copy I do it from the top view to make sure I'm spinning these around and they're staying in the same plane as the other one so we're just gonna do 180 Then I'm gonna go back to my front view select those again and move them back over make sure they're lined up and just kinda eyeball it up again and hit OK turn my box back on make sure they're all in the right spot and they look pretty good so turn that off for now and now we're gonna start creating the sprue and the runner all right to do that first thing I'm gonna do is come up to inspect and turn on my section analyst on the right plane it's just gonna make those uh, three grubs disappear for now and then we're gonna start a sketch on the right plane and using the circles I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna make say 0.135 should be good enough I want them big enough so as the plastic cools they'll leave enough room to suck back into the actual grub and I use my uh, concentric uh, constraint here to make sure it's in the middle add one more in down here 0.135 Finish sketch, go back to my front, and turn my section analyst off. And next thing I'm going to do is do an extrude on those sketches I just drew. And I'm going to want this to be, I'm just going to do symmetric. So when I pull them out, it goes both ways into the grub. Make sure this is on join. Click OK, go back to my front. And you can see I got my, uh, those are going to be my runners. Uh, once those are done, I can go to my top view and start a sketch on the top plane here using another circle. We're just going to make uh, the big old sprue runner. Uh, I'm going to do, say, 3.75. I don't want this too big, but I don't want it too small either. I think if it's too big and the hot plastisol sits in this thing in the actual mold, it kind of makes it warp. So. We're going to try to go with a happy medium and see what happens. So there we go. Again, we're just going to do uh, we're going to do finish sketch, do an extrude. I'm going to make this one uh, two sided because the bottom one I just need the bottom one to come down. Clearly, we're going to do join just far enough to reach those runners, and top one come up to about here for now. Back to the front plane. Now I can turn my mold box sketch back on. Uh, I'm actually going to edit that a little bit. I'm just going to delete that for now. Just shorten it up a little bit. Say 3.5. Should be good. Yeah, it should be good. All right, now we're going to actually create the sprue. So I'm going to start a sketch on the front plane here. And I'm just going to rough this in. Make sure this is in the on the center Let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing and I'm just gonna set some dimensions so this is gonna be 0.375 divided by 2 and I like to have this one from the top of the box usually about 0.30 Make sure this is constrained too. This is where the 
Fusion always throws me for a loop. All right, that's pretty good. Let's drag that one down, give it a little more angle on that. Hit finish sketch. And we're going to do a revolve. Yeah. Select my profile and select my axis. Make sure this is on join. And there we go. I just created my sprue. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this back a little bit. And I'm going to take all these bodies and just move them in a little bit closer. That's a little better. I didn't need those runners as long. I can actually uh, shorten up this box a bit too. Yeah, that's better. I'm gonna go with that. All right, one other thing I wanna add, I just wanna add some venting to these tails. So I'm gonna start another sketch on the front plane and just using a spline. I'm going to put it on the tip here. Just extend this out. And then I'm going to use the mirror. Mirror, mirror this around the center here. Okay. And then I'm going to use uh, a pattern tool. And I want these to go, should be about 340 to be even. That should be good. Just gonna finish that sketch and then I'm gonna use the pipe command. I'm gonna do, yeah, 0.03, that should be good. Uh, apparently I gotta do these one at a time, so let me fast forward through this. All right, that should be good. The next step is going to be to actually create the mold box. So let me turn off everything I don't need anymore. And starting on sketch three, we're going to extrude this out. And I'm going to go out uh, 0.55. And I'm going to make sure this is a new body. Click OK. And I'm going to go back to sketch three. Select that. We're going to extrude it out the other way. So it's going to be negative 0.55, also a new body. And there you go, got a two halves of the mold box. Next thing we're going to do is actually cut out the grubs out of the molds. So we're going to go up to combine. Your uh, target body is going to be your box, I believe, and your tool body is going to be the grub. And you're going to do, I'm going to make sure this says keep tools is checked because we need that again. And now if I turn those off, you can see I got cut out of one half. Now I just got to go back and do the other half. So we're going to go back up to modify, combine, target body. I always do that backwards. Target body, tool body, cut, keep tools. All right, now we can turn that off. And there you go. There's your uh, start of your mold box. You can turn that sketch off. Don't need that anymore. Next thing we got to do is add some holes, some alignment pins, and uh, some uh, chamfer some edges, and that'll be about it. Okay, for the alignment pin, just going to start another sketch on the front plane. And using some circles, say 0.245 is what I usually use for pins. Throw one in there, throw another one up here. Just going to throw some dimensions in here. All right, once I get those where I want, I finish the sketch and I'm going to extrude these out. So I'm just going to go 
15 out. And then we're going to go over to the other side of the body, or the mold. Uh, turn that sketch back on. We're going to create a new sketch though because these are going to be slightly bigger. I'm going to go 0.25. Use my uh, concentric constraint. Uh, depending on your printer, you might have to play around with dimensions to see what fits. I usually end up uh, reaming out my holes anyway with a drill bit just so they're smooth. Okay, I can finish that sketch. And we can extrude, cut those out. Not that. This one, that one. Into the body. And I'm going to go 18 on these. And once that's done, we can uh, just uh, start chamfering the edges. I'm going to go 0.05. You should do the sprue up there. Do the other half of this thing. Do the pins. I'm actually, let's see, turn this body back on. I'm going to round these edges off. Say 0.30. Close enough. And then I'm going to come in and uh, I'm going to chamfer all these edges too. This will hopefully make the mold a little easier to separate. Say 0.05 on that. Do the other side. It's pretty good. And I'm also going to do this. Say 0.03 on this. Well, 0.03. There we go. Hit up the other side. And I think that's about it. One last thing I like to do is just uh, change the opacity just to make sure everything lines up and looks good. Oh, I missed the chamfer. So I gotta go back and edit that. That's why I always double check. Oh, that wasn't right. I gotta edit this one. There we go. And everything looks good. So there we go. That's a finished grub mold. Just gonna save this as STL and uh, send it over to the slicer. All right, here we are in Simplified 3D. I've imported half the mold in. I can only do half at a time, as you can see. Uh, as for settings, uh, normally I run a 0.10 layer height because it gives me a nice smooth body and it captures all the detail of whatever I'm trying to print. But today I'm going to do something a little different and run a 0.25 millimeter because I actually want layer lines in the side of this bait for texture. And also normally I run 15 top layers but with this layer height I only need to run 6. I'm running uh, 3 bottom layers, not a big deal, and then uh, 4 outlines with 25% infill. So let me show you what this is going to look like. If I zoom in here, you can see the sides of the bait are going to have a crazy pattern on it. And these layer lines, are uh, I think they're going to be a pretty cool texture. So we're going to see how that comes out. Let me turn on the section view here. And you can see, even with uh, just six top layers, it's still going to be about a millimeter and a half of thickness all the way around this thing. So I don't think I'll have any problems with this one, but we're going to send it over to the printer and we'll find out. Okay, here's the molds fresh off the printer. Uh, they printed pretty well. I think that uh, that crazy pattern in there is going to look pretty cool. And hopefully that uh, 25 layer height leaves a cool texture on the side. Uh, the only thing I do to clean these up is I usually just take a lighter and uh, flash the mold. Just get rid of any uh, stringing that might be on the bottom there. And the only other thing I do is uh, 
I take a quarter inch drill bit and just uh, clean these holes out a little bit. Make sure the molds go together perfect. Not too bad. That's just going to get them uh, clamped up and uh, heat up some plastisol and uh, shoot these things up. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, clamped the crap out of this. Uh, it's probably a little overkill, but better safe than sorry. As always, I'm going to be using uh, some dead island plastic. This is a swim bait jerk bait blend. Uh, that's what I have. And I'm just going to be doing some hot pink uh, remelt because that's what I already have. Uh, mixed up so let's uh get that uh cooked up and uh, see what happens just gonna let that cool down to about 300 all right let's give this a shot There's a lot more plastic than them single shots I've been doing. Hopefully that's enough. All right, as always, just gonna let that cool down and see what happens. All right, time to crack this thing open and see what we got. All right, moment of truth. It's always hard to get the first one apart. I did put some worm oil on those pins, hoping this would help, but... Oh man, that's straight. All right, I gotta get a persuader, hold on. That's why I put that camphor on that edge. Chamfer, chamfer. dent in it. Oh, they're all dented. We'll have to try that again. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut the tails off, leave those in there, and try to do a two-color one. Actually, this one's pretty good. i pull that one out of there. A little bit of flashing. It's not too bad. I like the way it came out though, nice and uh, fat little grub. All right, I'm gonna cut these up and reset and uh, see what happens. Okay, to save time, I unclamped this already. Wouldn't be surprised if these are worse because the air has nowhere to go now that the tails were in there, but let's see what happens. Still got some denting. That one's all right. Huh, I don't know. Let's see what happens here. Seem like they're... Uh, Bonded anyway. Not too bad. Well, this first batch turned out to be a little bit of a failure with the denting, but uh, I'm still going to fish with these. I don't think the fish care about dents. I mean, overall, I'm happy with how this came out. I like the texture on it. Uh, those layer lines look pretty cool. I mean, it's hard to tell because it's soft bait, but overall, I'm going to call that a success. I mean, like I said, I just got to clean up a little bit of the flashing. Uh, I love how this. Uh, Two color thing came out. I always wanted to try that, so I'm happy with how that worked out. And uh, compared to my original sketch, uh, say this came out pretty uh, spot on. So I'm happy how that calibrate function and fusion works. But I'm going to try to do a couple more of these and see if I can uh, fix that denting issue. Uh, as for the mold, 
molds working pretty well. I don't have any issues. Uh, maybe I should add some vent lines on the body too. I don't know if that would help with the venting, but that's probably it could be just my uh, inexperience at uh, injecting. But I'm going to try to do a couple more and uh, see if I can fix that. So I did a few more of these and I was still getting denting. And we all know that from the plastic shrinking as it cools. So I did some Googling and it turns out my gate is probably too small. So what is happening is the gate is plugging up before the bait can finish curing. And this is causing the denting because it doesn't allow that extra plastic to be drawn in from the runner with the gate being plugged. As you can see, I'm back in CAD. I'm making the front of the bait a little larger. I'm going to make the gate a lot bigger and I'm tapering it in from the runner so it has more opportunity to draw in plastic. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to add some more uh, venting tubes across the whole length of the body. So I'm probably going to fast forward through most of this and uh, we'll catch up when I'm done. Okay, here's take two on the mold. You can see all the venting lines I have now and the gate's a lot bigger. So hopefully that fixes the denting issues. This is a perfect example of why 3D printing molds, or at least prototyping them first, is a good idea. Because if I made this out of silicone like everybody keeps telling me I should do, that would have been a costly mistake. Whereas now I'm just going to print another one for like $5 in plastic and hopefully it fixes the issues. If not, we'll try again. All right, I got version 2 all printed up. You can see all the venting lines now, and the gate's a lot bigger. And here it is compared to version 1. You can see that gate's at least three times bigger, and the front of the bait's a lot wider now. So that should actually fit the jig head better. So I'm going to shoot this off camera just to speed things up a bit, and uh, we'll see if any of these changes had an effect. All right, let's see if I finally got this figured out. Did coat this with worm oil so it should pop right out of there. That looks pretty good. I don't see a little dent right there, but those look pretty good. Let me get them out of here. These are still warm too. I didn't wait as long before I pulled them out of here this time. Those look pretty good. I gotta go right in the bath with them though because they are still sticky. That one does have one dent in it. Damn it. Alright, I'm gonna let those cure up and I'll show you the final result. Well, here's the haul of finished baits. Overall, I'm happy with how they came out. I like that nice uh, chunky body style. Here it is uh, compared to the original one. You could just see the the flatter tip, which I said will fit the jig head better. I didn't get uh, too crazy with uh, color. Just these aqua ones. And then uh, this was just some uh, purple remelt from one of the last uh, videos. I added some uh, glitter to it. It's actually this uh, Lure Works uh, hologram stuff. Chris from World's Worst Fishing turned me on to that. I got a couple of different sizes. This is a 0.40, and I even got a 0.008. This will be good for uh, adding to clear coats of uh, hard baits. But you saw the duels I did before, and then I did some uh, did some black and yellow ones too. This came out pretty good, but those led to these, the bumblebees. Uh, these turned out to be a lot more work than I thought. I was actually going to do uh, three blacks and two uh, yellow stripes, but... That was way too much work, so I just settled for the for these for now. But I'm really happy with how these came out. Can't wait to try those. Overall, mold held up pretty good. No no issues. It did did warp a little bit. Just in the middle there, but it squeezes flat no problem every time I use it still. I did do some crazy stuff with this. I was thinking uh, aluminum molds uh, dissipate the heat a little bit better, so I tried putting this in the freezer a couple of times to see if the... Baits would cure a little faster and uh, alleviate some of those dents, but I mean, I still did get some dents on some of these. You can see a little one right there. But overall, like I said, fish don't care about those. And I am uh, 
happy with generally how things came out. It wasn't a total success, but worked well enough. And I hope you guys learned something along the way. I did uh, do another variation of this mold. I did a ribbed uh, body one. I haven't shot this yet, so that might end up in another video. You never know. Uh, I did this as a core shot, so I'm going to put some rods in here, see if that works. I didn't really think this through. I don't know if I'll actually be able to get these two molds back together once all these ribs are uh, shot, but we'll see what happens. So, like I said, maybe you'll see that in a video, maybe you won't. But, as always, I just want to say uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace!